Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about planets of Warhammer 40K, as we talk about Fenris, the home of the Space Wolves. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K content every single day. Uh, and of course, if you have any suggestions for a planet that you guys would like us to create a video about, comment down below. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on Fenris. Fenris is the death world in the Segmentum Obscurus that is the homeworld and recruiting grounds of the Space Wolves Space Marine chapter. It was also the homeworld of the Space Wolves Primarch, Lehman Russ. Fenris is the location of the Fang, the Space Wolves massive fortress monastery. There are many death worlds in the Imperium, whose wildlife, native flora, and nature make them inimical to human life. Even in such baleful company, Fenris is amongst the very worst. It is a world of ice and fire, of wolves and dragons. It is one of the most inhospitable planets in the universe. Yet the folk of Fenris not only endure, but they thrive. A planet of fire and ice dominated by extremes of climate, Fenris is listed in the Apocrypha of Skaros as one of the three most deadly and turbulent worlds inhabited by humanity in the Milky Way galaxy. Fenris follows an elliptical orbit around its pale red K-class sun, called the Wolf's Eye, that takes approximately two Terran standard years to complete. This period of time is known as the Great Year to the people of Fenris. For much of each long year, the world is remote from even its feeble star, and its surface remains incredibly cold. The oceans freeze over as Fenris draws away from its sun, and at its farthest point, even the equatorial seas are covered with ice. The volcanic activity of the bleak mountains that punctuate the waters are stilled so that at the height of Fenrisian winter, a man can walk between the many isles upon which Fenrisians dwell. Toward the end of the Fenrisian Great Year, as the planet sweeps close to its sun once more, the wolf's eye swells in the sky and the brief spring warms the surface. During this period, the ice retreats to the world's poles and the gargantuan dwellers of the deep waters emerge to enjoy the bounty of sun-spalled krill, bladefish, and other short-lived aquatic fauna. As Fenris reaches the point at which it is closest to its sun, the passage of the planet so near the star produces tidal forces that break and twist the sub-oceanic crust, exposing Fenrisian molten mantle to the frigid waters. It is then that the time of fire and water has arrived. With explosive violence, the world is torn asunder. Blazing islands rise from the steaming sea, spewing flames with lava pouring down their slopes. Below the surface, the waters boil into steam that engulf Fenris with its sulfurous fumes. Great tidal waves scour the coastline. Islands created in the upheaval of preceding years are cast into turmoil by their global transformation. Some endure, but many are broken apart or swallowed by the seas engulfed in the churning waters and casting their unlucky inhabitants into the deeps. But the great lump of solid granite the Fenrisian tribesmen know as the polar continent of Azaheim always stands fast, a single, changeless continent on a world of fire, ice, ruin, and torment. This extreme geography has resulted in the human population of Fenris becoming one composed largely of primitive, nomadic, barbarian tribes whose barely approximate and Iron Age level of development. The tribes constantly seek secure territory, and as a result, skirmishes and feuds over land between rival tribes are common. The Fenrisian people are hardened to the changes in temperature and environmental extremes, and so is the native fauna. Native Fenrisians are used to the pattern of destruction that engulfs their planet every great year, and have learned to love the endless mutability of their land with a fierce warrior pride. Only on the northern polar continent of Azaheim are the human populations of Fenris protected from the extreme climate. Here there are many unique creatures not able to live elsewhere on the world. These include massive white ice bears, which are monstrous carnivores similar to the Terran polar bear who are large enough to assault human buildings. Fenrisian giant elk, which are massive mammalian quadrupeds whose towering racks of antlers are razor sharp and can cut a man to pieces within seconds. They are a larger breed than their distant cousins that once roamed Terra long ago, but are far larger creatures and more fearsome and aggressive than their extinct predecessors. The Fenrisian mammoth, 
which are gigantic shaggy quadrupeds, evolutionarily homologous to the ancient and extinct Terran Mastodon. It can crush a man beneath its great padded feet, or skewer him on its long ivory tusks. Stranger creatures such as the Ice Fiend, which is a great bipedal, white-furred carnivorous primate, very similar to the creatures known as the Yeti in ancient Terran folklore. They are approximately the height of an Astarte, about 7 feet, and their blood is known to be extremely acidic. Snow Trolls, which are even larger relatives of the Ice Fiend, who dwell on the continent of Azaheim, and are semi-sentient to boot. They represent a constant danger to anyone moving openly across the glaciers of the northern continent, including Space Wolf Astartes and Neophytes. The deadliest creatures are the native, semi-sentient Fenrisian wolves, for their wits are as sharp as their teeth, and the largest of their number is the equal of any of the great predators that slither and stalk through the icy Fenrisian wastes. Yet Azaheim is remote, surrounded by towering cliffs that rise thousands of feet into the air, above the seas, and separated from the oceans. Its fabled land provides no refuge for those that live beyond its rocky confines. To a Fenrisian tribesman, it is truly the land of the gods. The Space Wolves Fortress Monastery, known widely across the Imperium as the Fang, and the At by its inhabitants, is a massive citadel built atop the tallest mountain of Azaheim. This mountain is known by many names, including the Shoulder of the Allfather, the Volda Hamkari, and the World Spined. The Fang is the home base of the Space Wolves and extends into the surrounding mountain range, as well as into orbit, drawing energy from the geothermic source of the gigantic planet's molten core. Complex includes huge, ground-based anti-ship orbital defense laser weapons concealed as nearby peaks, docks at the summit of the Space Wolf's battle barges and strike cruisers, numerous shrines to the Emperor along the lower slopes, and massive fusion and geothermal reactors deep underground. Outside of Terra itself, the Fang is considered one of the most impregnable fortresses in the galaxy, constructed by the Mechanicum during the Great Crusade, using technology that has long been lost. It has never been conquered, although the Thousand Suns Traitor Legion, the Space Wolf's most hated foe, did manage to briefly occupy the outer slopes of the Fang after luring the bulk of the Space Wolf's force away from Fenris during the first battle of the Fang in the 32nd millennium. Along with the Fang, Fenris is home to the Fire Breather, a mighty volcano surrounded by a handful of hardy and stubborn Fenrisian tribes who risk the fickle wrath of the mountain. Wolf Lord Sven Bloodhow was recruited from amongst the Fire Breather's tribes and has brought some of his old tribal traditions, including the ritual markings of skin and armor, into the chapter. Thunder Mountain is an ancient site honored by the Thunderfish tribe from which Ragnar Blackmane was recruited. The Valley of the Bringing Stone is a strange and hostile valley that was once home to the deviant mountain tribe, entirely composed of rogue psychers known as the Vulture Clan. Scattered across Fenris are the remnants of ancient tombs and barrows, where the ancient lord of Fenris are buried. Kings, queens, princes, and nobles of the tribes were interned in ancient times in stone crypts marked with runes retelling the history and deeds of the individuals contained within. The Krakenspur is a rare island home to one of the few sites of permanent ruin on the surface of Fenris. When under the surface of the waves, the site serves as a great graveyard for the deadly kraken that stalks the oceans of Fenris. And those were 40 facts on Fenris. Now there's more lore to read. Uh, if you check out the wiki page, um, the link is going to be down in the description. It gives you way more information than this video has. Uh, we are going to do a part two where we talk about the different creatures of Fenris. Because uh, there's way more than what we mentioned. Um, and also we're going to do uh, 40 facts on life on Fenris. So what, what it's like to live on Fenris and what all the tribes are like. Uh, so of course, subscribe to the channel for that. If you like our content and you want to help us keep doing this stuff, please uh, share this with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, or whatever social media you guys use. Don't do it for us, do it for the Allfather. Uh, and uh, if you want to support us a little bit more, jump on over to Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys. Um, but yeah, with that said, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. <laughs>